obviously you are capable of so much more than what you think. Yeah. Um, and I would also just say that your power lies within you. Just being yes. completely because everyone is so afraid or trying to be everyone else or trying to make other people happy. And that's why everyone is so con- disconnected. Good as Gold, the official Gold's Gym Australia podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Good as Gold podcast. We are your hosts, Em and Cal. Howdy. We have such an awesome episode. I feel like we say this every single time, but literally every single episode no, that we say, it's, it's like it's real. Yeah. We have Meg Sutherland. From? Mega Run. She's also like, I'm pretty sure has done every sport humanly possible. Adrenaline junkie, but not even a junkie. Just does stuff because she can. She's capable. And that is what we're going to be touching on. Yeah. On capability and how you are capable and how capability creates confidence. Literally. And and what she actually goes over is is so amazing to just like from being the, the like shy, scared little girl that she was to being this like uh, literally like ray of sunshine, confident, like getting out of her comfort zone, fearless leader that she actually is. Yeah. It's going to be a ripper of an episode. There's a door in front of her. She'll kick it down. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Crack that door open. Let's go, Maggie. Proudly supported by Raw Energy, cafe partner for Gold's Gym Australia. Meg, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm so great. Ready to rip. Got a race tomorrow, so feeling very excited to get back into it and just ate two breakfasts, so I'm feeling <laughs> feeling very good. We're all very we're all very hyped. Off air, we we have just yeah. been been hype lords, which is which is Meg's signature signature word, which is what we call her a little hype lord. Hype lord, bundle of joy, just. Yeah. All of the things. All of the things. Tell us a little bit about you in like, a, honestly, like a quick snapshot before we kind of get into the nitty gritty. Tell us who Meg Sutherland is. Okay. Well, that's very nice. You call me a hype lord. I would like to think of myself as a hype lord. Um, me, myself now, I do I host Mega Run. So my husband and I founded Mega Run, which is a global run movement around the world designed to show people that they are capable of more or give them the opportunity to prove it to themselves. And then um, outside of that, I just do social media partnerships. And um, now I would say I'm a very positive and fearless human. But in the past, I would say I was quite negative and fearful of almost everything. So, I mean, if that's a snapshot, that's probably about as much (laughs) as you need. Literally. What can we can we quickly just have a little chat about you being negative and kind of like a bit fearful of everything? What changed? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm not sure of exactly the moment that changed everything, but my mom said it was like I just woke up one day and I just was a quite a different human. It's not like I was a, I was always a very happy kid, mm-hmm. a mm. happy kid, but I think as I went through my teenage years, I just let everything um, get to me, and mm. I, I just think I got a little bit narrow minded. In school, it's easy to do that because you think that the only world that exists is school, mm. and then. <clears throat> When I came out of school, or even before I finished school, I just realized that I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder, even though I was given an amazing life. So I had no reason to have a chip. I have a great family. I had a great upbringing. Um, And then I just realized the only person that was being affected by me blaming other people for it was me. And then just thought, okay, well, if you have got yourself here, you can also get yourself out of here. So you just got to figure out how to do that. So for me, I started doing everything that scared me and that just gave me a lot of confidence I think when you place your confidence only in how you look or what you have there's always going to be someone that's more attractive than you has more money has better assets whatever it is yeah. whereas if you just place confidence in your character and who you are and what you're capable of doing I think that's when I realized that that's what true confidence came from and if you're confident in yourself you naturally do normally end up being a more positive person because you're not looking at someone else wishing you had their life and mm. just love their life. And so that's what changed me. And for the, the listeners, like when, when we're talking with Meg here, like if you to think of a snapshot right now, we're talking backflips, we're talking motorbike riding, we're talking downhill. Skydiving. Skydiving. Swip, like <laughs> surfing, like 
skateboard what what, <laughs> what can't, can't you, you do, do? bending <laughs> backwards like that video still gets me that little like you just fully flexible it's incredible um you fully have then now embodied that full capability mindset and you're confident in your own ability um yeah. what like yeah i want to know like how to unlock that for like a person mm. who is like well i could never yes i, could, I couldn't yeah. do that where do you start okay. well i would say because I think when you're born, you're only born with two fears. I think it's falling and abandonment or something like that. So naturally skydiving, most people will be scared of it. But I think I just realized that all the fears that I had from then were learnt fears or I would I would talk about myself as a fearful person or a negative yeah. person. I just decided, okay, well, I don't want to be that person. So who do, you, who do you want to be? And then start taking steps towards that. So for f- fears wise, it's going to be different for everyone, what you're, what you're afraid of. Mm. And a lot of people can justify their fears based on their experiences. And that's fine, but mm. it just means that they're not going to get the benefit of overcoming those fears. So yeah. it can make you feel better in the short term, but in the long term, it just holds you back. So for me, I realized that if I could do, if, I think you overcome fear by either understanding or experience. So Mm. if you go and one of my fears was cane toads. This is how simple it is. I (laughs) I don't don't think anyone likes cane toads, but I mean, I really didn't like them. So then it started with me going out. This sounds so silly, but I was quite young going out with a net and just, we were catching cane toads. Like terrible experience, but it it very quickly, you just realize they're just a, weird looking frog and it doesn't really matter that much. And then it doesn't get to as much. And then the, the skydiving was the extreme of that because yeah. I, I was actually overly scared of skydiving itself. Tandem to skydiving doesn't really scare me, but having to be completely responsible for mm-hmm. all your decisions is what scares me because yeah. I would, me as a person would normally go and seek out every single person's opinion on one thing to try and figure out what I should do. But I just realized that the only person that can make your decisions on what you want to have in your life is you. Mm. So mm. go and ask all these people for their opinions of what either they think they're capable of or what they think you should do. But you, it just doesn't work because then you're just going to end up living their life mm. or listening to what they think they're capable mm-hmm. of rather than what you do. Because I can guarantee you, if I said I was going to do all the things that I do now to people back then, they would say, you're freaking crazy. Yeah, they would have laughed. Yeah. I, so I think just going and actually one educating yourself on the things. It's not like I just went and skydive tomorrow. We went and did a course and learned how to do it. Yeah. yeah. And we did research into how risky it is yeah. and things that can go wrong. So that's the understanding part. And then mm. you realize it's actually quite safe. It's a lot safer than just driving on the road and then um, going and actually experiencing it. The more that you do it, the less afraid you get. Yeah. I also think with fears, we like, where did they come from? Like normally or, or some of the things, uh, the, some of the fears that I had like growing up was like kind of because mum mum was scared of that or, yeah. or, or society was like, this is a really scary it's thing. Like, norm. Yeah, yeah, like even the, the skydiving thing, it was like, oh my God, like there's so much risk, there's so much, you know, there was never like, you didn't just go and educate yourself. It was just like, okay, that's something I would never do because that's so scary. So like I always find that it was certain fears that pop up into everyone's lives. I'm like, where did that come from? That came from somewhere. Yeah. And so it's like when you can overcome that fear and be like, actually, nah. No, I'm not going to be afraid of it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Um, this brings you get on a roll. You get you get really um, – once you overcome one, you just want to keep doing more because you get that confidence in yourself. Yeah. You can- yeah, and I think – and that's what I, like, I love that is like getting that confidence and building confidence. And we both see that day-to-day in, mm. in our jobs. Yeah. is like coming with clients and they slowly build confidence and – it's so good to see and like to be able to like help usher that. And that's what I love. Um, just going back to mega run, um, your, your company. I personally have been on a few mega runs myself and I love the, the vibe. I'm a, um, I would say I'm a semi hype Lord. Yeah. I'm up there. Yeah, baby. You're cool. jumping. All right, cool. I'm jumping. I'm bumping. So like when I heard <laughs> about like the vibe and then someone was like, come on, man. I was like, cool. So ultimately if you don't know what a mega run is, actually you, okay, you, mate, you, you, you take it and then I'll jump into the story. <laughs> well, um, Mega Run, <clears throat> more recently, I think Mega Run is more of a movement so anyone can be a part of it. But yep. we do have organized hit that. So the movement itself is running every single Sunday to build discipline and therefore the confidence that you're capable of more. So I started doing it 
last year in January. So it's coming up to almost two years. So I started running by myself every Sunday because I just wanted to do something consistently rain, hail or shine, no matter how I felt that I I had to show up to for myself, by myself. And it's actually, it was a lot harder when I was doing it by myself. But um, I also realized that it, people would always ask me when I moved to the Gold Coast, people would always ask me to go out on a Saturday night. And I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a huge party girl, so I didn't really enjoy it, but that was the only way I was meeting new people. Yeah. However, I still found the conversations were super surface level mm. and not really about anything or yes. making any actual friends, friendships. And I wasn't really meeting people that I clicked with. And I think it's because most of those people were asleep on a Saturday so that they can go and do whatever activity they like to do on a Sunday. Mm. And people would always pester me to come out on Saturday. And then mm. I, when I started saying, oh, sorry, I'm going for a 10K run tomorrow, it was just like, oh, okay, that's all good. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm thinking, wow, I re- really, really wish I could figure this out earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that was when I actually met my now husband. Um, he came for a run with me because he saw me going for a run um, every Sunday and asked to join. And he said, when I told him why I was doing it, he said, you should share it with more people. Yes. Um, it's a really cool concept. Mm. And, but we didn't ha- have any intention to make it what it is now. Yeah. We just thought, oh, we'll see if anyone else wants to come. So we asked our friends and then um, random people started showing up. And then from there, we realized just how much someone coming for the first time and running further than they thought they could. Yeah. They just had this almost an aura of confidence. Yeah afterwards and yeah. that's how it made me feel but I just didn't realize it would do the same for other people yeah yeah and I, I think that um so mega run is running up to 10ks every Sunday or at least trying to run 10ks every Sunday and um I think that 10ks is an attainable distance you could come and I could get you to run 10ks if you've never done it before yeah it might not be very fun but I believe that you can do mm. it off the back of not much mm. like, I think no training yeah um, okay. Where I think a distance like a half marathon, it's best to put in a bit of training. Of course. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then people asked to for me to bring it to Brisbane because I was originally from Brisbane Redlands area. And so we did that on a Saturday because obviously we couldn't be in two places at once. And then from there, people just started asking to have one in Melbourne and other places as well. So I said, okay, well, we'll have a crack. And then a lot of, there was a lot of locations all at once. Um, and then we've just learned so much along the way. So we never plan on making it something that makes money or anything yeah. like that. It's, um, of course, I'd like to build something that supports it off the back yeah. because I do want to make an income myself as well, apart from social media partnerships. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mega Run itself, we just didn't want there to be any barrier to entry because running changes lives and we just want to show people that yeah. because then they can do it for themselves. And I think I don't know if that answered your question. I just went away. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's good that answered. It, it answered it, and and I think that's what like the, my story was coming to is like I I've run before, right? So I rocked up with my friend, and he wanted to hit a PB on the 10k, mm. and he's like, "I'm running yeah. with this mega run crew." I was like, "Excellent!" Got there, there, everyone's energy was Hyped. so high. It's mm. like six o'clock in the morning. I've just woken up. Everyone's <laughs> jumping, doing the mega run. I was like all right, let's go. Anyway, just (laughs) vibes are high. We're all running together. But it's that like the support, that community effort where like everyone was there for the same reason to better themselves. And like the chats that I was hearing while I was running, it's like, you've got this, you can do this. I ended Mm. up like coming on my way back and they're running in a line together, pushing this girl who had like never run a 10K. Yeah, it gives me goosebumps When I finished, we all went and got a coffee and I was like, the hell are you guys like this yeah. is so sick we need more of this like yeah. um so yeah, that was literally- my first experience of it and I, I loved it that idea of like just morale just pushing together and we need more of that there's so many people who do things alone and if you had someone to like encourage you to show support mm. and to show truly what you are capable of doing man your confidence would boost and i think you'd begin to change but what running teaches ultimately is that discipline side of things is like you can do hard things yeah and i love that it's free yeah yeah inclusive like you don't you don't have an excuse dog like <laughs> what is yeah. your excuse yeah i'll pick you up <laughs> i'll pick you back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best i think it's great that you had that experience too and i, I really appreciate that you guys can talk from your own experience at Megaron. um because one i think that i think that everyone has an inner hype lord we just got to find what they're passionate about that yeah. makes them feel like 
And if we can give people that one time a week where they know they can just come and be completely themselves, it doesn't mean they have to be that super jacked human being. Yeah. There has been so many occasions where someone's rocked up for the first time on their phone, sitting like this in yes. the corner. And we've gone and in, um, grabbed them and introduced them to some people and they've been the last person to leave the cafe. Yeah. So yeah. if you can give people a little nudge and put them in that, um, just drop them in the deep end where they have to talk to people, then they end up actually really enjoying it. And I also think um, one important thing about Megaron is because we live in that instant gratification world, no one knows that, well, not many people know how important discipline is. Mm. So people will start doing something in the short term, but they don't realize that the things, the long-term things that are going to provide that fulfillment and not just the highs yeah. and lows. Yeah. I discipline in order to have. So doing consistently mega run every single Sunday, yeah. no matter how you feel, it just teaches you to stop letting your mind negotiate you out of doing things or sticking out things because really every time you say, okay, I'm going to do this. And then you don't, it's like you are degrading yourself or disrespecting yourself and letting yourself accept less than what you think Mm. you actually Mm. So Mm. found that having that one thing as a non-negotiable trickles into the rest of your life as well. You, when you, go to do the dishes and then you think, oh, I'll do it later. Instead, you just do it right then, then and, and there. there. And then all of a sudden go, oh, I'm actually a really disciplined person. Yeah. And then you bring that on as one of your traits. And so people just are completely changing their lives. Like they have the confidence to go and get out of jobs that they don't necessarily love and go and pursue jobs mm-hmm. that they're really passionate about, which is the best thing. That's, I mean, that's what I do it for. And that's what all the other hype lords do it for because even encouraging people who come along and encourage other people for the first time to like you saw with that girl, it also gives you that really good feeling of, wow, just help someone, which Mm. you don't really get to do very often in life unless you do volunteer work somewhere. So I think it's a really cool complimentary thing where you can do it for yourself, but then you also can help others at the same time. And I think speaking on that kind of like, you know, you stay in a job you kind of hate and, and, you know, you don't have the confidence to push outside the boundaries. It's like, actually like, you know, you speaking from experience, right? Because I know you were a personal trainer before you started Mega Run or like before you kind of took it full time and you were also studying physio and all of the things. And it's like, you chose to step outside the comfort zone. You chose from being comfy and like, you know, you would have been earning earning money and all of the things to now pushing towards mega run because that's something you're so passionate about run us through what kind of like where you are at okay that is a really good question because that was probably the scariest of of course because I didn't when when I was growing up I was very academic I was also an athlete but I didn't do much else apart from that I just trained and studied and because I was smart at school and I mean, I love science. I really believe in university for science degrees Mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But um, I think we all thought as kids, because I have two sisters, my older sister is a doctor and my younger sister is a nurse. Yes. um, And I was doing physio. So we all end up in science fields. But I think growing up, I actually thought I was going to be a vet. I always wanted to be a vet. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I just just thought that was what I was going to be. And then I, towards the end of my school career, I just thought of, I'm probably not smart enough to be a vet. I think school sometimes can give you a bit of a closed minded. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I wish. I love my school. I went to such an incredible school, but I wish that we had a little bit more, um, I guess a better perspective on the possibilities of career fields so that we could think, okay, if I want to be a vet, I Mm. can just go and speak arts for a year and then get a really good grade and get into vet or something like that. But anyways, I did actually get into that, um, but I had already done my bachelor in exercise and nutrition science because that was my second passion was fitness and health. And then um, I thought, okay, well, it's five years out at Gadden. That's a lot of time and in the middle of nowhere. So I thought, well, I'll go and try try working in a vet and see if I like the reality of the job, which is the best thing that I ever did. And I think that if, you, if someone has an itch to do a career, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, you should do it just go and try because at least if you go and try it then you're not going to be thinking about it for the rest of your mm-hmm. life you're yep. not going to be thinking, should I have gone yeah, and done it and you go, yeah you don't go and waste five years studying when and then come out and go why did I do that and then you're already committed to it so mm. 
went a bit my toes in and I actually really enjoyed it, but I just realized the reality of the job's quite different to what I thought it was. So um, didn't study, didn't choose to study vet, which is a big decision. And then I thought, okay, great. I have no idea what I want to do. Mm. Um, I was still doing all my social media fitness stuff on the side, but I never thought that I would make a career out of it. Mm-hmm. And then um, my physio at the time said that I would be a really great physio and he would lo- have loved to have me at his practice. So then I went and studied physio if I want to study it. So I went and started and just thought, okay, well, I'll just see if I like it. Yeah. Did it for a year and um, did not like it. Mm-hmm. Everyone <laughs> around the classroom and everyone just was so passionate about yeah. it. And I just thought, okay, the only thing that is scarier than um, taking a risk and doing something else is having to do this for the rest of my yeah. life and hate it. That would suck. So then that's when I met my husband, but we didn't know we were obviously going to be husband. <laughs> <laughs> He said to me, well, why are you doing it if you don't like it? And I just thought, oh, well, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know what else I would do. Yeah. And then so he encouraged me to just start trialing other things. And yeah. that's when I went into PT. And then I got signed by Gymshark. So that gave me a lot more flexibility to yeah. do whatever Huge. I wanted to experiment with. And that's when I started to go harder with Mega Run um, and backed off on PT. And um, yeah, that's where I'm at now still. I still think that. I've always had a, quite an entrepreneurial mindset. It comes to my dad. So I've, I, I, it, before I even met my husband, I used to always say, I think I'm going to meet someone that's going to teach me how to um, put my business mind into action yep. because I just didn't know much about business. And then it's so weird because it actually happened. But I used to say it all the time to my mom. I don't know if that's manifestation or what it is, but I used to say it all the time. I just didn't realize it was him until I, until I met him. That so, is so yeah. cool. So cool. <laughs> That's but, it, yeah. but the answer is I just tried lots of different things until yeah. I figured out what I what I liked. Yeah, and I think that is it, isn't it? And like even speaking on like in school and those sort of things, and like I don't know about you, Meg, but like um, you know, having siblings who who go to study on and and have you know quote unquote these like mm. d- dream careers, or maybe there's like an expectation there in people's families of just like like you know yeah, all yeah. of those things. It's like it's so cool to to hear you kind of not I guess um you know going against the norm or whatever because I think that that's so important for especially like we're all the same age or roughly. Yeah. It's like I just feel like growing up, it was such a a big thing in school to be like going to uni or yeah. and um yeah, it's just like yeah. It's a correlation almost of like you know if you're if you're just in the same job and you're comfortable, then are you going to be like comfortable you know stepping out and doing something that's scary or like are you going to get out and like you said like go and do something crazy, jump out of a plane, mm. you know, for all all of that. Um, yeah, it's super interesting, like the psychology behind all of that. I'm sure there's some doctor out there who knows the. Yeah, the maybe reasoning. your sister can tell us. Yeah, get into <laughs> that. Um, with uh. with all of the the stuff you do, from being in the hurt locker, from doing a 12 hour race to doing a double marathon, and you just brushed briefly on, um, you know, your study in um, sports nutrition. What is what is eating for that like health look like to you? What is it like to fuel your body, and you know, how do you even go about day-to-day life eating okay good question um learn going and studying nutrition it mm. definitely makes you um more cautious about your decisions that you make with food but i always say eat for health because i see at well, and i have friends who have struggled with restricted dieting mm. and um, unhealthy eating habits and i just think it's such a shame because food is so there to nourish our bodies yeah. and to be enjoyed um, but unfortunately, there's just such a negative, um, I guess, there's so many negative behaviours around it. So I just try really hard to share authentically with people what I do so that they're not going on and trying to buy these diet plans that they stick to for two weeks and then end up binging and everything like that. But mm. I guess for me, what I the things that I choose to eat is over years and years, which unfortunately is not the answer that people like, it takes time to figure out what works for you. I've figured out what I like to eat and Mm -hmm. what works for me. But I think the best thing to do is figure out the things that you love eating and then just make a healthy version of it. So Mm -hmm. the best way to eat is as raw and unprocessed as possible. And 
if you can afford to do so, eat organically because it, mm. it really does make a difference. I, I've studied a lot of the ways that meats and um, or, and, and even um, veg, fruit and vegetables are farmed these yeah. days. And it's, it's quite a shame. I understand why it is because we have such a high demand, but um, it's not the nutrient contents in foods now is just nowhere near the level that they used to be because mm. the demand is so high. So mm. my recommendation is always eat as raw and as raw and unprocessed as possible. Mm. Figure out how to make that enjoyable for yourself. So if some people love chocolate, okay, we'll have a 90, 70, 90% dark chocolate and enjoy it every time you have it. Mm. Or I eat dark chocolate most days because that's my thing. I love chocolate literally so. chocky girl yeah. chocky girls some, some <laughs> people, yeah, it's the best some it people is. might love might love burgers or chips that's usually the the ultimate option yeah it's um, like savory if you're not then, sweet you're definitely yeah. like a burger chip girl yeah. so what? then just figure out how to make it healthy because that's that's your long term that's what you you want to enjoy your food in the long term or else you're not going to have it but you want to get the best out of it but yeah i don't know what you're meaning in terms of races um I think no, that was perfect. Yeah, you definitely answered the question in a sense of like, yeah, I know you're a believer of eating for you know eating for health and and I think it's important to talk about because like yeah. I mean in our society right we're very much that that diet culture well, or yeah. restrictive eating and if you were to say what does healthy eating look like they're like well I had a salad and I split an ice cube like <laughs> you know yeah. it's like but also there are some people who will eat junk food and look really thin totally but yeah. Their- are not going to be healthy. Exactly. So. And I love that you said eat for health. It's like, how is your brain? How is the insides? Like how is yeah. literally your body responding to what you're eating? And, and especially like longevity. Like you could eat McDonald's and you could still be jacked and like be ripped, but like eat McDonald's for 20 years, man. Yeah. And like your how's insides, your, your the chemicals, your, your body imbalance is like not good. Mm, interesting. That's a good one too is the gut brain axis. So yeah. even when you're eating... That's what I, that was probably the thing that I Got loved biome. most in my nutrition. Yeah. In my nutrition degree is when you eat, say if you're eating McDonald's all the time, your actual bacteria changes and those bacteria release neurotransmitters to your brain. So your psychology, whether you realize it or not, is actually being affected in the long term. Totally. And this is where like, even if we were to talk about like anxiety and depression, right? Like, you know, I I don't want to delve too hard into it, but like, this is exactly why it's like so important to fuel your body for your brain, for your gut, like so that those types of things, you know, we can, we can slowly but surely, um, or or at least just help ourselves with that. Definitely. And if you're feeling good on the insides, your outsides, you're glowing. You're glowing. Oh, when? <laughs> yeah. going. So run us through why you like because Is that a pun like run us through. Run that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's good. That's okay. really good. <laughs> um run us through kind of like you are like you're doing absolutely everything and I love that because it shows that you can you can be a runner, you can do a mountain biking race, you can do gymnastics, you can do it all and it's just like so cool to actually see you being like hey, we don't just have to like be the runner. We don't just have to be the mountain biker. It's mm. like what what why do you believe training is so important and like why do you believe that having a variety like of training regimes under your belt important um well I think the the way that I train is so that I can do random things all the time yes. I, I would like to mention that if you want to be the best at whatever it is you probably need to just focus <laughs> stick to doing that. yeah yeah but if you want to be I'm nowhere near ever going to be the best mountain biker yeah. but if you wanted to you'd need to put most of, of your efforts there. yeah but I just like to train, I would say train to know you're capable. So yeah. I, I'm constantly, I combine my training during the week of running and then I have sprints and then I'll do functional training so that my core is strong, my upper body is strong. And um, I just do a mix of training so that then if I want to go and do a big race on the weekend, I can. Um, yeah, and you don't, don't have to train for it or... Well, I, I mean, I train every week for it, but I'm not training so specifically. Um, sensibly and specifically. Yeah. But mm. ultimately I, I probably should do a little bit more ultra um, training if I'm going to be doing these big races, but it's fun to just do it spontaneously mm. as well. And you are, you are somewhat gambling with getting injured, but I just believe that I do enough training during yeah. my weeks to prevent those injuries because I'm strong. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I have a very balanced body so 
um, yeah, I just think that I know my body. I know how far I can push it. Yeah. Um, my brain always thinks it's more. Um, <laughs> but you, you know, so if you put in the work in, in your everyday life, then you can do more spontaneous things, which mm. is why I like to do that. Mm. I think like what you said is, is like you just owned it then. Like, you know, your body's, it's like an affirmation. Like I am strong, I am capable. Like, you know what yeah. your body can do. And I think that's awesome. Mm. How important is, is like, challenging yourself like stepping out of your comfort zone and, and like i'm similar in the way i train like i usually do powerlifting and i just recently did a half marathon and you know i had people in the gym being like you're a powerlifter you're not a marathon okay. runner it's like i you just challenged me i'm yeah, gonna do I it now do like why can't i be fitting into all these boxes like you said how important is it to challenge not only your mind but your body mm. well for me i just love it i it's what i live for i love seeing I just think I've been given, there are so many people who haven't been given the blessings in their bodies that I have. So I just think I want to absolutely live it and inspire people as much as I can with what I've been given. Um, But I think, what was I going to say? I've lost my training, but this is always (laughs) what happens. Um, In terms of... Like why it's so important to to push your body and push your mind. Mm. Um, Oh, this is what I was going to say is sometimes... Sometimes it's not necessarily the physical challenge that is as hard for me now because I love it so much yeah. and I know I know what I get from it. Sometimes mm. it'll be if I get injured and yeah. I have to take a month off. That is way harder mm. than um, just doing continuously training. So um, a lot of people, I give I give advice to high boards if they get injured or other people at the runs, and that is normally what they struggle with most as well. And my advice is, well, you got to use it to focus on something else. You got to challenge yourself in a different way. Whether that means you never read ever. Okay, well, every time that you would normally train, let's focus on reading mm, yeah. or finish a course, doing personal training or whatever it is. You just have to. The only life is always going to throw. Um, curve pulls at us and we just have to learn how to adapt that's the only it's what we're, humans are meant to do but it's, it's the only way to handle things yeah actually and it's so cool that you know it, it's just so cool to watch you and, and listen to you actually have such a positive outlook on it because I do find like even you know you were just saying before that um you were that that type of person that was just like eh, like yeah. a bit negative a bit this bit that and um i, I want to actually touch on you becoming a gymshark athlete how was that feeling like firstly this is so massive yeah, <laughs> yeah. how it was yeah how was it feeling um well i'm i'm actually not signed with them anymore that it was a decision that i made it's no no negativity either way i just was at a point where i wanted to have a break from mm. partnership um, but when I first got signed, it was so incredible. I just, I feel like that was always something that I spoke about it. I think, I actually think I was signed with a brand in previous and that didn't end well and it wasn't a great experience for yeah. me. And I remember saying, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just get signed as a Gymshark athlete as a joke, um, to myself, not to anyone else. <laughs> and then I just remember thinking that's actually achievable. I should just, I should just have a crack at doing it. Yeah. And then. I think I just, I don't even remember how it happened, but I just kept, um, I think I wore a couple of Gymshark things and then they reached out and I couldn't believe it, but it was amazing. It was, they're, they're an incredible brand. Their story is incredible. And um, yeah, they were so generous and I loved my experience with them. I met so many great people too. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. Well then I want to talk about the events that you are competing in at the moment. So you have something coming up this weekend. What are you doing? Um, it's called the Terra Nova 24. So we, <laughs> it's, we are not expecting to be overly competitive in it, but we'll have a crack. Yeah. We are more just doing it because we want to challenge ourselves and we have we're doing it in Paris sorry my husband and I and we have so much fun when we're in the hurt locker together and pushing the boundaries that's why we get along so well um but it's a combination of kayaking mountain biking and running but you have to navigate to certain checkpoints so it's got I haven't done a race with orienteering before so we'll see how it goes but you'll navigate to a certain point, ride your mountain bike there, get that ticked off or run to the next point or whatever it is, um, which will be a lot of fun. But we had Red Bull Defiance last weekend, which is why we decided to do this this weekend because we loved it so much. 
it was such a fun race. So, yeah, we're a bit hooked on the um, endurance racing, but we do have a few more races at the end of the year as well. So sick. Do you remember oh, orienteering? That sounds so much fun. I do. I was terrible. Horrific at camp. Maybe school camps. I just didn't understand it though. Mm, <laughs> yeah, that's probably that's actually probably it. <laughs> I just well, remember. I'm not going to be the navigator. William's going to be the navigator, so it's all good. Like I'm yeah. so good with like being. If, if if when I'd go to a new country, I'm like geographically, I'll be put on there, and it's like I, I'm. Just, I think I'm good at maps and like everything. In my, and Ella's like, you got to walk east. I'm like, that's east. And I don't <laughs> even know why, but I'm just like, I know this stuff. But when it came to orienteering, I'm like. <laughs> I don't know what the hell topographically. That's kind of like as well. Where it, like I um, one of my like uh, friends' sister who is older than us. Like they um had a diary. She was telling me she had a diary of like um maps. Yeah. So she'd like because phones weren't around or Google Maps like, wasn't yeah. around. Yeah. She'd like have to be like you know turn, turn left, left on, on Howard. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, thank That's God. Be- of reference. Is that what you mean? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Do that. Did you not do that when you were a kid for your parents? Yeah. like, oh, Yeah. I mean, yeah. Probably, I mean, I remember being in the car like. Like, like I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was just more like I could lick my finger, turn a page. wasn't on the next page. Yeah. So you'd have to. You'd be like, yeah, go to B6. They're like, where is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Freaking yeah, out. I, oh, my. I'm so grateful for maps now. I am. I'm very grateful. Um, what is someone that inspires you every day? And the next question on top of that is who is someone that inspired you or still does? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a bit different, but every day it's funny because he's sitting in the room, but it's my <laughs> husband would be the person because he, he just, he's like me, but the more experienced version of me. Amazing. And so he manages to look at things, everything, nothing is a problem. He's so positive and he's just able to, he's a solution, complete solutions mindset. So Love even that. sometimes when I get stressed, he's just, Totally fine the whole time. Mm. I just get too big. I'm just leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that ego that's, is high at the moment. That's wholesome. Oh, that is. I wasn't even doing that while I was in here. Yeah. I'm getting a little, little awkward. <laughs> I'm flustered. Um, <laughs> but then I would say, outside of that, obviously my parents are the best humans ever. Yeah. Um, if you want someone a little bit more well known, because <laughs> no one can really relate to these people. Um, obviously love David Goggins. I just think yeah. yep. he's the perfect example of um, taking life as what he was given mm. and making the best out of it. And he, I think he, because he is so strong in what he believes, he does rub a lot of people up the wrong way. Yeah. But I just love that. I think if you believe so strongly in what you're doing, of course not everyone's going to like you. And of mm-hmm. course everyone's going to believe in what you want to do, but he's so stoked in his own life. So and, yep. and he's been able to just n- not make any excuses. And they're the kinds of people that I really relate to because he had every excuse to use, mm-hmm. but he chose not to. Um, and he still does. Even now, it's not like he's living this crazy, luxurious yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. He's still grinding at that, that, what he's passionate about. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Because, like, I think in order to – I think you have to be polarizing in order to, to magnetize. Like, I think you have to, mm. you have to be polarizing. You have to be passionate. You have to, in order to magnetize, like for, for mega run, as an example, it's like you, you're so polarizing in that way, in the best possible way of you just being like, this is it, yeah. like do it. Yeah. And, and that is what gets so many people in. Mm. Yeah. Th- it's, um- it, it is. It's because we believe wholeheartedly in it. Yeah. Exactly. You're yeah. passionate. What is next for Mega Run? Authenticity. Um, yeah, that is the word. We got it. Authenticity. Um, what is next for Mega Run? Okay. Um, well, I would. I, up until now, we've got 12 hit out locations. Hit outs meaning the organized locations where everyone comes together. Mm-hmm. But I think. I would like to just encourage people to get into Mega Run more as a movement so that it's not, excuse me, it's not limited by where you are so yeah. people in Spain can wake up and do their Mega Run every Sunday because mm. I really just believe that if you did commit to doing your Mega Run every Sunday, you'll, your whole life will change. Mm. And, um, obviously, it's better if you are around the like-minded people because then you make new friends as well. 
but even just by posting it on social media and that sort of thing, people around you will start to say, hey, can I come and join you every Sunday for your mega run? I mean, mm. that's how it happened for me. So um, if people start getting more involved in doing it by themselves, then I think naturally new locations will emerge just by people doing it themselves. Um, yeah, so I think that's the main for mega run. We do have a couple of things that a couple of visions that we have for it long term, but mm -hmm. I, I won't say anything yet because I just hate to say things and then them not come to fruition. So um, stay tuned for that one. But yeah, I think for me, I'll just keep working on, um, I'm in discussion with a couple of brands that I've already actively used. Mm -hmm. So yep. there could be some potential partnerships coming, but um, yeah, at this stage, we'll just keep going hard with Mega Run, keep racing and that that's about it. Um, and, and so sick. being someone with, um, you know, influence and like you're saying that like you look up to David Goggins and I know a lot of people who, who follow you, um, and I would say you're a person of influence and inspiration. Thank you. You've got, you know, you've got the influence. What, what's something you want the world to know? Tell the world something, you know, what would that mm. be? Oh, well, obviously you are capable of so much more than what you think. Yeah. Um, and I would also just say that your power lies within you just being yes. you completely because everyone is so afraid or trying to be everyone else or trying to make other people happy. And that's why everyone is so disconnected to who they are because they're trying to make everyone else happy. Who's also, those mm. people are trying to do the same. So it's very confusing. So yeah, they'd be my two things. You're capable of so much more than you think and just be yourself. It's, it's your, it's your biggest power. I've got goosebumps. Oh, she's good. I want to go for a run. She knows what she's talking about, this chicky. We are running to sushi for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you are actually amazing, Meg. Before we go, we normally um, have a little game, which is just fast five. We talk, we ask you five questions, and you just have to think and just go. Okay. <laughs> I'm go, ready. Uh, what is your dream enduro race? Dream enduro race. Oh, probably the hardest ultra in the world. Amazing. <laughs> no, I don't know if I want to commit to it. <laughs> you don't have to commit. You don't have to commit. If you could meet anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, I think in my head I just thought David Attenborough. Oi, cool. Wow. I, I just think he knows things. <laughs> yeah, literally that we don't. Yeah. He knows things yeah. that we don't. And can narrate them so sweetly. <laughs> uh, what's one thing you're looking forward to in the future? Oh, babies. <gasps> Cute. <Yay>. <laughs> we love that. That's I so... Can, I can protest that they are great. They're beautiful. Yeah. If you had to eat the same meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, mm, probably salmon in a salad. That's so hard to answer that question. You just nailed that. Yeah. What would yours be? A variety. It yeah. would be sushi. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. And when I'm like a little nigiri myself, I believe. <laughs> um, what's your guilty pleasure? Or oh, dark chocolate or peanut butter. Mm, yeah. That would you mean? <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and let's just go throw in a six here. Powerade yeah. or Gatorade? Oh, Powerade. Same. What flavour? What flavour? I don't really drink that much except when I'm racing. Yeah, okay. But, You'll take um, anything at that point. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we had one on the weekend that was pink. I think it was lemon and something, strawberry. What? Oh, wow, they've gone a bit they've bougie. Gone a little, it was, used to just be like blue, yellow, red or purple. Yeah, like, <laughs> like Let me icy tell you, blast. In the race, it was amazing. I <laughs> bet. Yeah. yeah, just what you needed. Yeah. Well, in, in, race, in races, when you get the food, you – it tastes so much better than oh, when you have it out in real life. And we ate these biscuits in a race and then we ate them out in real life thinking they were going to taste amazing. And they, they were trash. <laughs> Not the same. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Meg, where would we find you? Where can people find you on your platform slash everything? Awesome. Um, well, my social media is just the best place to find me is Instagram. So at Meg Sutherland. So I'm now Martin, but I'm still a Sutherland on Instagram. <laughs> and then... Megaron um, at the Megaron. That's where you find us. Honestly. And and I like I can encourage everyone to jump on Megaron and Meg's 
like personal Instagram yeah. because seriously, you put out so much inspiring content. We just like, we literally love it. And I just know so many of my clients also like my client, some of my clients are actually dead that I'm interviewing you. Yeah. So <laughs> that's so nice. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you so much for joining yeah, thanks, us, Kelly. That was so much fun. Thank you for having me. It's been great. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow. Talk to me. How'd you feel about that? You feel inspired? Yeah, literally, I actually really, really do with this episode. Meg was so cool to talk to and the, and just her mindset on how to get out of your comfort zone and that it will lead to greatness. Just Is there anything that you wouldn't do like in the extreme sport world slash like jump out of a plane? If I, if okay. I put you in the car right mm-hmm. now and say, we're going to jump out of a plane, what would your reaction be? I would do it for 100%. That's exactly what I no did. No doubt in your mind though, you'd be like, no. Oh man. No. Nah. I, I actually did this with my partner for a birthday present. So I told him like, just be ready at 4.30 yep. or whatever. And um, I'd booked us both to go skydiving for our birthdays. And um, yeah, basically our whole family was there. And, and because obviously it's right near the airport, we had to drive to yep. the airport. Yes. And um, he was like, who are we picking up? Who's coming? And I was like, yeah, think again, you my friend. You out of a plane, buddy. <laughs> So it was actually really cool to see his reaction because he was like, okay, all right, like no time to prepare, no time to even think about it. So I actually think that if you did that to me, I'd actually really froth it. That is cool. I've always wanted to jump out of a plane without a parachute, but then get given a parachute. I have seen... (laughs) That's actually pretty gnarly, Just because that's like, you know how like they do like free falling and free diving? Like that's literally... What about those suits... You oh, know, like the, the, wing suit, the, bats, suit, yeah, the wing suits. Wing yeah, wingsuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah bat cool suits, too. whatever they are. Yeah. Would you... Do you know what I'd actually... There's thought? nothing I wouldn't do. Really? How's that? <laughs> no, I believe it. 100%. To my core. Do you know what I'd love to do? Yes. We were just speaking um, off air about the, the, the whole Nitro Circus thing. Mm. I would actually really love to be, try something to do with a stunt on a motorbike. Oh, yeah, like a backflip. I, I, I think even like going up the, the ramp and like kicking oh, a little can can yeah yeah like a little kick off oh, you know maybe superman whoa that uh, would be that would be so much what did you learn from this app what did I, I learned i think it just reinforced my belief that that i am capable and that i should continue to challenge myself mm. and not just get stuck in the same way of like oh i'm this i'm just going to continue doing this mm-hmm. but honestly it's always challenge yourself better yourself but also knowing what i already know which is what i love about my job and that is bringing people along with you. Yeah. And that's it's so important to encourage people. It's free. Like if I can say, you can do it. You're probably going to go an extra 100 meters. And then the next person says, you can do it. You just keep going. Literally. Imagine it is that in any, any, in any aspect of life. It's crazy how our mind works, isn't it? Because like that is it. If we, if someone is encouraging us, like I know when I've done um, like runs or events or anything, it's like when when someone is there just being like, you actually have got this. Yeah. It, I'll, uh, uh, of course I do. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, it's in it. it is just so cool. I was finishing up this 21 kilometer run that I recently just competed in and in the last kilometer like the li- the streets are lined mm. and they don't know you. Like they don't <laughs> know who you are. And they read your name on your little tag and where it's got yelling. your number and they're just like yelling and I have my headphones on blaring just to get me going and I could hear this screaming outside and I was like <laughs> yeah. My heart rate instantly went from like 120 up to 150 because I was just juiced up on everyone else's courage and is. sprinted the final K. Like, <sighs> bam. How well, about that? I literally, it, it's been such an amazing episode. I hope you guys have loved this episode as well. Yes. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, rate, leave a review. Five stars only. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we look forward to bringing you another episode in your ears. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Catch ya. Good as gold. Gouda as golder.